What's up everybody? I'm Tanya Estrada and today we're taking a break from Tanya's Treats to bring you Tanya's Treats on the Streets. This episode is very special to me because it is the pinnacle of me and my homies who have been working a long time and really hard, over a decade as a matter of fact, and to all be together one week in Vegas is amazing. But for really so you guys, enjoy the episode. This is adult conversations, people. You, if you don't like it, leave. Okay, thank you, bye. I got my homie, Subway over here, Julio Gonzalez. I got Amir the Miracle. We got Andrew Hunt, and we're gonna have one of our buddies join us later. So this place is called Mas Favor Tacos in Las Vegas, and it's actually a speakeasy. It has a hidden area in the back, and that's where we get to kick it at and order some tacos. I swear, when, when you moved out here, they like weren't going to be right. I'm going to get the fucking taco. Because <laughs> I was going to get Pooley now and the fucking taco, but now I'm going to get the fucking taco, Queenie's Choice. All right, cool. Uh, can I do a ginger ale and the nachos with the cream on the side instead of on it? May I have uh, two pulling outs with no ketchup? <laughs> 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 two pulling outs with no ketchup? <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, we didn't talk about when I lost my virginity. No, oh, yeah, yeah. How old were you? I was 16. Oh, and I have been and I have been practicing with his aunt because she got me to Planned Parenthood to get me on birth control six months before we were gonna do the thing because we've been together since we were like twelve, right? So we were like planning to finally have sex. And um I remember the first time I was gonna try to have sex in my room and my mom walked in on us and I was doggy style. And ever since then, I think that's why I don't like that position. <laughs> trauma, it's trauma. Emotional damage. Yeah, yeah. Keep turning around. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's let her finish, let her finish. And this is a door's Yeah, no, right, yeah. No. I, can, I can see why you connect those two. Dude, yeah, and it's like, it's not comfortable anymore. And then after that, my mom took my doorknob. <laughs> So Ooh. there, yeah, so you know, and it, no. It's called it, the glory hole. Dude, it, yeah. <laughs> had I known, had I known, I could have sold tickets. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> pretty good at six cents after that. Uh, you ever yeah. got into doggy style, she would. <laughs> like there's something going on. <laughs> and then, like, my parents try to keep me, like, grounded. So then I figured out how to sneak out of my house. I would jump my balcony, okay? And my dad would park his van underneath. So I jumped the balcony, go down the van, and go down the ladder. <laughs> jump onto, the onto the van from the balcony. Yeah, second story, yeah, right? Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, go, go, go down, right? Get picked up, right? Yeah. Go through my whoo, right? Come back up. <laughs> use the same van. Yeah, yeah, use the same van, get back up. The little ladder in the back. <laughs> yeah. Had, yeah, the little ladder in the back with the tire right there, you know? Okay. Yeah. And the guy that I was with, I was so in love with this guy, right? Right? Like he was a white guy, like the family's from Nashville, so he had like that blonde Farrah Fawcett hair. Uh -huh. But if you looked at his face, he looked more like Rocky Dennis. <laughs> Everybody used to say, Tanya's with the guy from Mask. <laughs> guy from Mask. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I was so in love with this guy, you guys. I was so in love with this guy. And my parents were like, why, you know? So he had moved to Victorville. And my family was like, if you guys want to be together, you guys got to get married. And I was like, okay, but he was already 18 and I was 17 because he was a few months you know, ahead of me. And so we were going to go pick him up on the dirt road, right? We were going to drive to Vegas and then he was going to live with us. He was going to leave his family. He was going to come be with us, right? So we would show up to the dirt road at like three something in the morning. Were you dressed like Cher? <laughs> no, no, I have my wedding dress on. I was ready to go. <laughs> I my still, the veil and everything. Yeah. I'll fucking keep in the van, the same van that I would jump down. <laughs> and we waited on this dirt road for probably like two hours and he never came out. And we drove home and I was crying, right? And my, my, my parents, no vale la pena, no vale la pena, right? He's, he's, he's not worth it, he's not worth it. And then I kind of find out that his mom found out what he was going to do. 
So they said, if we buy you your dream car, will you not marry her and stay with us? And he said, yes. Oh. And he got his dream car what and was, he stayed there. The um, it was um, <laughs> yeah. like one of those uh, muscle cars, like a like a challenge, like a Nova oh, or something. Oh, well, you can't blame him for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you know, that's the engine. Yeah. I know, I know, it's like, yo, now that you have a car, come get me. <laughs> so, no, 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 no. So I had it. So I had to get over it. I had to get over it. He he moved on, right? I moved on, and years later. Would you believe that he lost all his fucking hair? So he was just all for him. And I was like, fuck, I fucking saved myself from that one. The best thing my parents ever did for me. <laughs> so yeah, that, and that's why I don't like doggy style. <laughs> <laughs> when you're young, it's like, this is what I want, this is what yeah, has to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and when it doesn't, bro, I think expectations are the biggest reasons for any disappointment. It is. Oh, cheers, right? Cheers, yes. We got a flower drink right here. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. 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 So, from LA to here in comedy, how, what do you feel is the biggest difference from LA to here? As far as comedy. Because nobody in this industry knows me or seen the struggle, I feel like I just get all this love and respect like right off the bat. Because anybody that's seen you grow, they kind of don't see you as a superhero. But the people that don't know about you and you just show up and they can see what you do, they're just like, oh, bro, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel like about Vegas is that even though I want it from my own city and I know I'll get it from my own city, is that this place is showing me love on a different level that I've never seen before, you know? Like, I've done the local news already. It's just like, it's a trip. That was beautiful. I saw you do that. That was great. That was awesome, great. man. Yeah. Like, I just can't believe the, the, the support and everything that they are getting out of here. And that, that would, to me, was like the realization is that your, your value, you can have love for your home, but you can travel outside of that and your value can grow with that. Mm -hmm. Being in a different place, and it's usually because of that, because people don't know the whole past or anything. They just see what is in front of you. And it, and it became a dope moment because I felt like I was at the best point I've ever been in my life, mm -hmm. the happiest I've ever been. So that that right there is just it was like a, a boost. It was a boost where back home I would kind of have to convince everybody, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but over here it's, they assume that already because that's what they see, and, and, and that's where people, you know bring their judgments on you and everything else. So here, I've just been having this dope experience where it hasn't been uh, uh, anything like too crazy. I mean, I kind of keep to my own and all that stuff too. It's part of the secret sauce, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's been, it's been a lot of love. And, and, and when you're gone from your home for so long, because it's the longest I've ever been gone from California. Me too. You know? I, I, I've never gone this long, bro. And, and when you go back, I know that love's going to be there. But they need to miss you. Yes, that's true. People need to miss you, bro. Like, like once they see you daily, they take advantage of the fact that you're always going to be there. But, but the when minute you're gone, and then people like trip out on the call me, they're like, when are you coming back to Lambda? Like, Not yet. Like, nobody can afford my new price. <laughs> come back, no, I, I literally, I'll go. Because when you put your call to your baby, but they just, there's a lot of people that trip out on me. Yeah. <laughs> so, what brought you 
I tell you what, I came. I got a divorce. I got a divorce during COVID, and I have uh, always wanted to be a comedian. And I started my journey as a comic, getting on stage for the first time in about 2001 at the Improv. During COVID, we got divorced. But I, I knew that it was time for me to go to Vegas. So the first time I tried comedy, I was like in my early 20s. And uh, I, got, I became uh, Mitzi Shore's assistant at the comedy store. From 2004, uh, 2004 to 2005. And then uh, it didn't go well for me. I, didn't, I, I, I showcased a bunch. I didn't get passed. And I got frustrated. So I went into filmmaking. So I stayed in the entertainment industry. And I just did up open mics. And I wrote as much as I could. But when I got the divorce, I realized that it was just my time to do me. And doing me meant being me. Born and raised in LA, I never left. I never lived anywhere else. So, uh, you know, at 43, I said, let's do it, baby. It's the last, <laughs> last chance you got. So uh, now I'm 45, and I make a living as a comedian full time here in Las Vegas. Now, it's not the sexiest living. Uh, Comedy isn't. It's like, there's levels to the game. There's yeah. levels to the game. It's like the very top, right? Yeah. Super sexy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The bottom you have to look. Yeah. Right, so I'm doing bar shows. I'm doing as many clubs as I can. And uh, I'm putting my, my EPK together to uh, get more work. But yo, every every dollar I'm making right now is either through stand up comedy uh, or podcasting. So uh, I, I'm yeah. very grateful. I don't know if you guys know this, but Andrew also runs uh, one of Las Vegas uh, discount websites. Like, you know, where people try to find Las Vegas deals. Yeah, I run that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very successful. I work with Las Vegas Advice, so I do their podcast. So I co-host the podcast. But it's really Anthony, who Tanya's met. Uh, Anthony runs the whole thing, and he's uh, you know a professional gambler for uh, like four years. Uh, he's in the blackjack hall of fame. So I get to learn a lot from him as a mentor, and then I get to co-host the podcast. And you know, we made hundreds of dollars on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but we do it for the passion. To be just a comedian, making money as a comedian, that like that's that's everything for me. But I know there's levels, and I know if I don't stop. I'm just gonna go. Yeah, that's, so. that's where I think I kind of benefited where I struggled on purpose. You know, back when I had my money, I act like I didn't. <laughs> I would eat the cheapest love, just save, save, invest, invest, invest. And that's the only thing they gave me this, this whole freedom. Where'd you live in LA? I, I lived in the city of San Fernando, bro. This is right after the, uh, the market crash, the housing crash and everything. Yeah, yeah. I uh, bought my house. It was under 200, bro, like 198. In the city of San Fernando, I was like, that's what I heard of, bro. Then I saw the house and I realized, like, it's fun. <laughs> 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 so I said, like, you know what? I'm going to take it, bro. I was in a battle with the other house I was renting because the, the owner of that place went to foreclosure. And people were coming knocking on my door and saying, yo, can I see the house? I'm like, Oh my, I was like, what are you talking about? I'm renting this place. He's like, boy, it's for sale. Can I see that? And I was like, no, you can't get it. There was a lot of that going on. Remember right where they would do Craigslist? Rent out the house, but the house, so they had to make the payments. So the house ends up falling into foreclosure or getting sold, but the they tenant still, is in there. Yeah, they're still oh, collecting wow. money and stuff like that. So I was thinking I had to save to move somewhere else. By this time, I had, I had my lady and her daughter. So I was taking care of both of them. I'm just like, damn, my man is going to lose everything. But, bro, battle the whole man got out of that. But, to, to your point, you're going to like, when they go through that trauma and that experience, you think it's the worst time for whatever. I always had that mindset like, yo, I'm gonna get back to and I can't believe I'm going to pay. Like, it was just simply in the contract. They said, if I didn't pay by the 10, then they will serve me with papers. He served me with papers on the court. But his lawyer came in there trying to, like, you know, bully me and everything. So I had been practicing law for 12 years. And I got two questions in. <laughs> and then the case dismissed. No. <laughs> and then I walked by the lawyer, and I'm like, you practicing. <laughs> <laughs>
that let me know that most of the time, whatever I'm gonna go for, the fear is always in my head. That's what things are. But comedians, we gotta kick fear in the ass. We have fear. It's scary. That's not the easiest thing to get up on stage. Not only that, trying to remember everything that we have to say up there. And it, and it also goes along in life the same. Other things, like choices. Oh, should I do this or should I not do that? Like, I'll be honest, I've been having a fear of doing this exact same thing, which is having a round table of comedians that I love working with, hanging out with. We all support each other, we all feel the love to have a meal and record it for people to see. And it's been a fear because, well, I don't know if I'm gonna have a camera guy or who's gonna hold the equipment or, you know what I mean? Like, this is it. You know, you guys, this is a whole fucking setup in here, you know? And But it, but it, it was really, what I realized that really can get rid of fear is preparation. If you prepare, like you're preparing for a test, there's nothing to be scared of. Maybe that's why, huh? Because if I didn't prepare for a test, I'd always get a D or B. But if I if I prepared, fuck yeah, I would get an A. And it's like, I think it's that, oh my god, I just totally had like a therapy moment. And I like, have my own psychic problem. <laughs> This is Las Vegas cocaine bear right here. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, the taste of human flesh. Oh my god, I uh -huh. wonder I like it so much. They said it tasted a little bit like pork. Like pork? Mm -hmm. Well, they eat the buttocks, because that's the meatiest part of the body. I know. So Is it really? So they slice off the piece of the butt. They made a movie with a soccer team that crashed in the mountain. Yeah. Oh, oh my was god. it? It might have been the soccer team then. I'm yeah, they, they ate each other's butts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, after they were dead. Yeah. They ate the, no. the dead butts. <laughs> what, about, what about semen? It has protein. So, Dude, semen's supposed to be really good for you. <laughs> I, told, I told Will, I said, I won't suck your dick, but I'll drink your cum. No. <laughs> I never tried my own cum, I'll tell you that. I mean, I know, me I know plenty you. of people who have, but... This is for all I know three plenty of people who drank my cum, but you know, <laughs> I'm for, just not one of them. For all three of you guys, and if you want to try your own cum, Funny enough, I don't, don't try it after you've eaten tuna fish or asparagus. That, that will that'll put you off to the experience. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> try cum at its peak before you try it at its worst. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only in the comforts medicinal benefits, okay? <laughs> they will. <laughs> William, when did you lose that your pillow. virginity? When did I lose my virginity? That was like, like right on the cusp of 1718. Okay. Actually, it depends on what you consider losing your virginity. Got the El Pastor and steak tacos. No, that might have been me, because I just said whatever tacos they had. Hey, so that's a widely debated away? topic, yeah. because I always thought that I lost my virginity when I jerked this guy off in a glory hole, but then someone was like, uh, they don't count that because it was only jerking them off. Uh -huh. So then yeah, there was this, you didn't lose nothing. Then there was this one other time where, because I don't, you see, I'm very much a product of the internet generation. Uh -huh. I bit off a lot more than I can choose so many times. Because then there was a failed attempt at fisting with this one chick. But I feel like the first time that I actually had sex sex, I guess would be with my first-ish boyfriend when he, th that's another thing. Do you consider oral like losing virginity? No. Okay, that's now this. Now this. <laughs> <laughs> you see, because. Yeah, that's just business. I'm just saying. Okay. You see, the more. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, <laughs> you see, because I can't, the more I have this discussion, the further my virginity gets pushed back. They're like, oh, <laughs> it's like, like, he's like, I'm still yeah, so what, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Do you only consider it losing your virginity if you penetrate someone, or does you getting penetrated count too? Because that's a whole other can of worms. You know what? You in bring your, up a your, valid point. Your, <laughs> I consider yeah. either or. 
Yeah. Okay. So in, in that case, case, definitely a hard 19. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> Not the but, size of the guy. But who? Oh, the 25. No, it's hard. You were at the top. What was the bottom? Oh, I bottom all. I hate topping. Like oh, I will. I will like if. I if I I don't hook up with switches anymore because switches will always be like oh I can bottom then when you get that like oh my god I know I said I could bottom but could you just top me I'm like oh you you, you sneaky little twink is what I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Joe, you came out of Vegas. What? Did you come out of Vegas? Oh no, I came out of New Jersey. Dude, that's like, I, I have only ever done New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York glory holes. Like, once I've come, I haven't done, like, as, as like, that. it's like, people Did I are, say glory holes by accident? <laughs> no, no, but, I'm just asking. No, but, I guess it's still on the topic. No, this is just, this is just a funny thing. It's like, it's something I think about because people always ask me, it's like about the glory hole scene here. And I'm like, I actually don't do glory holes here. Like, what, you don't do glory holes? But you have the, like, the story of glory holes. I'm like, well, in New Jersey, a lot, everyone's a lot more repressed. Like in South Jersey, especially, like, it'd just be a bunch of old rednecks at these glory holes. And it's like, you don't look through, you don't look through the hole. You're just like, ah, there's a dick. I'll imagine what's on the other side myself. Because if you look through, it's like some old guy with a big old beard and only three teeth. And it's like, ah, it looks like I'm Point the hills have eyes. But, it's like, <laughs> but since I've come out more west, I mean, I guess I've never felt the need to visit the glory hole scene. But yes, to yeah, answer your question, I'm I started trying to Jersey. find out what city he came from. <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't my oh. question. Did you Ocean, answer? Ocean City. Answer? Well, <laughs> Ocean City, New Jersey. Uh, Christian Resort town, actually. <laughs> have you ever tried glory holes in California? No, I, yeah, no, it's like glory holes were a thing when I first started coming out, because I was like, it's just one of those things where it's like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to meet some guy on Craigslist, that's creepy, I'll just answer the glory hole ad on Craigslist, that's a lot safer, <laughs> it's what I, it's They're just a fun, then I, then I got pulled into the, 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 I got pulled into the scene, it's a whole fucking scene. Is there money involved? Nah. Why not? <laughs> well, you see, this is a, <laughs> dude, this is a thing, it's like, men just want to fuck. That's the thing. Like, where women can do prostitution, there have been people who's like, oh, give me $600 and I'll let you fuck me. I'm like, ah, you silly bitch. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the market is oversaturated with, with boy hole and, like, dick. It's like, you really think I'm going to pay for this? <laughs> <laughs> Silly bitch, tricks are for horses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't even get me started on the kink scene. The kink scene gets crazier. The kinks? Yeah, kink, like bondage and stuff like that. I feel like I just hijacked this conversation. No, <laughs> you're good. We are learning today. Okay, take us to school. So, the kink scene, I never formally got involved in the kink scene. Again, I got through that on Craigslist. And you also run into a lot of safety issues, too. Like, uh, there's one thing that I talk about a little bit called needle play. I don't know if you know what that oh, is. Oh, tell us. So needle fake? Yeah, it's basically you're supposed to get these medical grade needles and you put them into like sensitive parts. Like people put them in their necks, people put them through their nipples, people put them up and down their dicks and stuff like that. And, and, <laughs> and usually it's just to, it's like a part of uh, sadomasochism. So it's like if you're a masochist and you like pain, like that will enhance the experience. And like... I was approached like when I first started trying to get into kink by someone who was like, oh, I want to do this to you. And I was like, no, I don't think I want to. But then I was approached a little bit later by someone on FetLife who's like, oh, you went to needle play? I was like, you know what? I've been a prude <laughs> for a while. I might as well give it a try. And so I went over to this guy's house and he used big old sewing pins. And you're not supposed to use sewing pins because they're too big. And also they're not hygienic because you're supposed to make sure that everything's wiped down with medical alcohol and stuff. And so he put like a cock ring on, so all my blood was stuck in my penis. And he put all the pins in, and I eventually came. And he was like, oh, that was fun. And as he started taking them out, I guess all the blood stuck in my penis just started shooting out of all the holes. And it was just like, and the guy like started freaking out. And when he got them all out, he eventually stopped the bleeding with like a bunch of Starbucks napkins. But after that instance, I realized, oh, because I, after, this is the thing, after I do something wrong, then I look it up and they're like, oh yeah, no, you're supposed to use medical grade needles. You could have lost your dick. That's like, that's basically what the internet so says. So for everybody yeah. out there, is Starbucks napkins the best? If you're looking you to stop bleeding on your dick, so Starbucks is the place you go. If you get a chance for someone to put needles in your penis, let me tell you. It's a 
interesting feeling. And then don't, don't even get me started on sounding. Sounding's a thing that you won't even realize is dangerous until you realize what you, what you go wrong with it. And if you don't know, you don't tell me. I've heard of it. Yeah. What is it sounding? It's a tuning rod. Yeah, yeah, so, you got them started. <laughs> so basically sounding is you're supposed to use specialized rods. And you use these rods and put them down in your urethra for sexual pleasure and stuff like that. But basically what happened was, I had someone sound me, or well, they, they used a big, you did it? they used a pen, they used a pen and they sounded me, and I came blood, and I was like, well that's not normal, so I went up to the guy, I was like, I don't want to alarm you, but wait, I used to calculate blood. Wait, wait, hold on, You said that's not normal. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the pin was going to Well, that was like, that was like, but, I just want to see where you're at. <laughs> First of all, I'm what you would call an explorer. So, <laughs> so this guy said to me, I came blood, I was like, hey man, I feel like that's weird. And his response was, oh no, that's normal. You should stop hurting in a few hours and you should start peeing on them in a couple of days. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. So I looked it up online and the very first thing at the top was you should not you you should use a sounding rod, do not use everyday objects like pens or pencils. <laughs> Back to 
Okay. Let me know about you guys. What time are we at? Yeah. Oh, right there, right on time. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Tanya Estrada. This is Julio Gonzalez, Amir the Miracle, Andrew Hunt, and William Strange. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that you're like full on training right now at your job. You guys just love what you're doing. It's so really fun. It doesn't have to do with butt stuff. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like this video and share it for new episodes every Friday at 8.